Okay, let's bring in the roundtable. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former DNC Chair Donna Brazile, former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, and Democratic Congressman Richie Torres of New York. So, Governor Christie, have to start with you. No secret, you are thinking about running for president. How would potential and real candidates against Donald Trump view that performance at CNN and also the reaction of that applauding Republican crowd in New Hampshire? Well, it, it, look, it depends on who the candidate is, right? Now, we've watched a number of declared candidates and almost declared candidates now who all seem to really not know what to do with them. Um, they kind of cozy up to him. They hope that he implodes and that if they're nice to him, that they'll inherit his voters. It's all this, like, political science classroom theory um, that they're engaged in, which I think is a losing proposition for any of those candidates, including what Governor DeSantis said. You I mean, DeSantis didn't mention his name, to be look, clear. I mean, he didn't, he didn't say the words Donald Trump. You can't you can't beat Donald Trump by playing bumper pool and hitting it off three cushions and hope that it goes in, it goes in the hole. Um, it's, that's not the way it works, John. And I think they're all making a marked mistake. As to the audience reaction, let's face it, CNN went in the tank to get Trump on there. They allowed him to negotiate who was going to be in that audience. And those were all Trump supporters. I don't care how they introduced them. Those, I know a lot of those people in that audience. I spent a lot of time in New Hampshire eight years ago, and a lot of those are the same faces that I saw eight years ago. Though you, you pay no attention to the audience reaction. Those were all people who, in the main, 80 percent or so were Trump supporters. So that was a negotiation deal that the Trump did with CNN, and I think CNN was wrong for doing it. Donna? Well, it was entertaining. As a former CNN... Oh, Tributor. Uh, well, I'll say now what She's I... She's been everywhere. <laughs> you can't even tag that on her. I'm still a oh. silver fox, okay? Be careful. Um, look, it was entertaining. It was disgusting at the same time because this is a guy who continues to repeat the same lie after lie, somehow believing that it's going to become true, that the election was rigged. It was even more devastating to hear that he might consider pardoning the people who attacked the citadel of our democracy, the Proud Boys. And he made it clear most of them. It yeah. wasn't like just a few here or there. I mean, right? but, you know, but that was vintage Donald Trump. He want to stick it to us. He want to, you know, make us pay for our sins. But Donald Trump is the perfect candidate. Look, I don't know, Governor, if, if hitting Donald Trump will somehow or another, uh, you know, deflate his base. He seems to have an appetite for this moment. He seems to know what he's doing in terms of projecting that he is the guy that, to be. Ultimately, the Republicans will have to decide if they want to repeat the past or go ahead and, and start focusing on the future. But, uh, I mean, it's not just the audience, Governor Hogan. I mean, the, the, the guy has widened his lead. Yeah, I think that's the thing that's really most concerning is that, uh, you know, he, he packed the audience, certainly, and CNN allowed him to do that, which uh, you probably should question CNN for how that happened. Uh, but it's not just them. I mean, he's got 50-some percent of the Republican base, and that's what we've, you know, Governor Christie and I are trying to make the case that we've got to move in a different direction, that we've got to move on from Trump. and. Um, you know, we've just got to see some uh, candidates step up and get out there and make the case about why we've got to do that. Uh, you talked about Ron DeSantis coming in. I mean, he, you know, he's been trying to out-Trump Trump, and that's not going to work. I mean, it's like, why would you settle for, you know, Robin when you can have Batman? It's like, you know, it's, he, he, you've got to take Trump on and not just be a younger, smarter version of Trump. And, and Congressman Torres, I, we, we had a speech also yesterday, a commencement speech from Joe Biden, Howard University. Made what seemed to be some a pretty grave tone, talking about there are those who demonize and pit people against one another, and there are those that will do anything and everything, no matter how desperate or immoral, to hold on to power. I mean, how do you, how do you look at the at the threat of Trump second time around, third time well, around? I mean, Don, Donald Trump is the Freudian it of the Republican Party. He represents what's worst about American politics, and the person we saw at the town hall is exactly who Trump is, always has been, and always will be. And so we should stop being surprised by the vulgar and crude snake oil salesmanship of Donald Trump. What I found notable is that even though he loves name calling, he conspicuously refused to call Vladimir Putin a war criminal. Mm. He conspicuously refused to say whether he wants Ukraine to win in the war. So here you have a likely Republican presidential nominee whose moral compass is so broken that he's more offended by a CNN host than he is by a war criminal like Vladimir Putin. And he actually said he doesn't like to talk about winning or losing. 
Yeah, well, that's all <laughs> well, he talks about. And, I mean, and, 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 you know, look, <laughs> I, I think the congressman is right in the sense that, you know, people are talking about kind of the, the, the show, the Trump show, and how offensive that was. What I think is even more offensive about what I saw at that town hall was what he was saying about the important issues that are facing the country right now. You know, certainly your point on Ukraine, I think, is, is extraordinarily important. Um, but, but also that he would allow default unless there were serious cuts. Where were the serious cuts in the four years of the Trump administration? In the four years of the Trump administration, he left with the biggest budget deficit of any president in American history. He added more to the debt at that time than any president in American history. This is a guy who says one thing and does another. But I remember back to 16, John, and you'll remember this too. He said he was the king of debt. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he wants to be the king of budget cuts. It doesn't make sense, but Governor Hogan's right. Until somebody's out there and taking it to him, this is all being done in a vacuum. So is that gonna be you? I don't know, but I'll tell you this, someone better do it. Hey, I've been taking it to him for six years, but we've got to get some people in this presidential race. Yeah, it's in the ring. You've got to get in the ring and do yeah. it. And you have to get in the ring and do it and take the risk that goes along with that. So what's holding you back? You know, John, these are tough decisions. And if you want to run for president, you can hey, do let's it too. You know? uh, 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 let's, get, let's get done. Let's get this done. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. we, we want to we see can, you in that ring. We can make this happen right here. <laughs> uh, I know, I, John, you know, I know I couldn't. As <laughs> yeah. persuasive as you are, I'll take a pass at the moment. Put the pressure on right now. 40,000. Can you get 40,000 donors? Can you get your <laughs> approval rating up to 1% so that you can debate? You just did several Facebook ads attacking Donald Trump for saying he refuses to debate. Now, the question is, if you're ready to debate Donald Trump, then you should be prepared to run against him right but now. But here's the okay, dilemma. Okay, maybe not me. Don just did. You know, I think it's yeah. interesting that Donald Trump refuses to debate the Republican uh, challengers and that uh, President Biden refuses to debate the, the Democratic challenger. I, I, you know, when would you ever see two top candidates But, but here's the to dilemma. Debate? The more crowded the Republican field, the more advantageous to Donald Trump because there is a significant segment of the Republican electorate right. who is unwaveringly loyal to Donald Trump. He's the god that they worship. Which is the point that I made when I decided not to run, uh, that I didn't want to see a multi-car pile up, that we have too many candidates and do the same thing we did in 2016. But I don't think too many people are following that advice. Looks like a lot of folks are going to be jumping in. <laughs> But we're a long way from voting, so, I mean, you know, pe people can drop out before Iowa, before but New Hampshire. It's far too early. I mean, if yeah. you think back to 2016, a year before the election, all we were talking about was Scott Walker and Jeb Bush, and Donald Trump wasn't on the horizon. Uh, so it, everybody's talking now about Trump and DeSantis, but it can change. I mean, somebody's going to rise up, uh, and it's a long way from the election. Right, look, John, the other thing, you, Donald, will remember, Donald will remember this back to 2007. In May of 2007, Barack Obama was 42 points behind Hillary Clinton. 42 points. 